We're here in Abbotsford, walking through a berry row. You know, these, these plants are completely destroyed. Yeah. You spent quite a bit of time here, especially when all of this was happening. And one thing that really struck people, I think, was your connection to the farmers and the stories that you brought to the rest of British Columbia. What is it about these farmers that has made you feel that connection? It's a great question. Oh, actually, so just uh, being in this field, I'll just say that it's, an, it's emotional because um, I'm just thinking back six months ago where I was standing on the side of the road with many of these blueberry farmers and um, just a look of shock and, and devastation on their faces was, uh, I'll never forget it. Farmers wear their hearts on their sleeves and they tell you a lot of things about how their lives are, are going and uh, they're in so much pain. But what I really wanted people to understand is that these are people that work every day to feed us and they're in big trouble. Yeah. In these six months since the floods, what is it that's struck you about their resiliency? Is there any particular story that you've heard? Oh my gosh. You know, there's just this absolute resilience that's in their blood and um, it's remarkable. There's. There's a lot of concern, obviously. We're still making sure that people that need financial um, support and to get up back up in farming, that process is gonna take uh, longer, but we've already seen about $25 million uh, get to farmers. We've got, in total, 228 million. So we've got a ways to go, but we're getting through it. And I think farmers are seeing, seeing that happen and so they're relieved but mostly they just want to get back and farm and so when you look at these bushes I mean this this at this point um, we heard it was 12 feet under water yeah right here it was yeah and so when I flew over on the helicopter that couldn't see any of this it was just like a, a lake and because I've spent so much time on the ground out here I knew the roads and I knew the houses and some of the roofs of the houses were exposed still and I'd been in those those homes and so I at that moment I thought there's this can't we can't fix this this is like this is the worst thing I could have I couldn't e have even imagined it being so bad did you have any idea where to start I didn't know where we could start I just knew that we couldn't give up on it it seemed hopeless but I felt like if the farmers weren't gonna give up, there's no that way that we could give up. So for people who don't know berries well, and that's yeah. probably a lot of the province, these plants are destroyed. Um, these have to be ripped out and the farmers have to replant with new plants. Yeah. Now, they're saying that insurance is covering a portion of that, but it's not covering the entire replanting and it's not covering the crop loss really for the next six years. What can the government do to help them even more because they're stressed out. Mm -hmm. They're feeling this mentally. So the recovery package, so the 228 million, was really um, organized to work outside of the programs that are, already exist. And so within the Ministry of Agriculture, we have what are called business risk management programs and they're insurance programs. And so some of those programs are for crop interruption some of them are for price fluctuations. Uh, some of them are just crop insurance generally. Uh, and so the agri-recovery dollars, a partnership with the federal government, we looked at if uh, outside, if you didn't, whatever didn't qualify for those particular programs that were already on the table, the agri-recover was on top of that. And so that's true that agri-recovery wouldn't necessarily cover some of this but we've got uh, programs like agri-stability um, that would, agri-insurance that would. So is it, because we've spoken to so many farmers who say, well, I'm out thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars because insurance and government aid isn't covering all of this. So is it just that they don't know how to access the, the funds? Um, no, there, I mean, up until last week, farmers' homes weren't considered part of the package. So that's changed as of just you know, seven days ago, uh, that'll make a big difference because I think farmers were really worried that they, they, they didn't know how they were going to rebuild their homes. And um, so we've changed that now. 
When you see this damage all around you and you think of the, the faces, the people behind these crops, what's your message to them as they continue to try to rebuild because they're burning out? Farmers, in a way, are rock stars these days. Mm -hmm. And um, I think a lot of them are starting to realize that, but that doesn't take away from the fact that it's extremely difficult. But, you know, when I look at a plant, for example, like this, these are gonna be ripped out because they've had, they have sustained too much damage. But you look at some of these dead branches and there's like this. Somehow this plant has figured out how to send out a shoot. Mm -hmm. and this is new life and this is new energy. And this is kind of like the farmers. They've, they've had a horrendous year, yet a lot of them, they've still got that passion for farming and they're gonna survive and we need them to. Thank you for your time.